Let's discuss what self-publishing is, why you should self-publish your music, and finally, how to self-publish your music. Before we define what self-publishing means, we have to be first upfront with what the term publishing actually means. If we head over to Merriam-Webster, they define publishing as the business or profession of the commercial production and issuance of literature, information, musical scores, or sometimes recordings or art. Now, right away when I read this, there are three main parts of this definition that catch my attention. Yes, 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 go on. Number one, this is a business that we were talking about. It has nothing to do with your music or how you create your music. The business of self-publishing your music is a completely separate endeavor and you should strive to keep it that way. Number two, this is a commercial production. In other words, there are goods and services being rendered in the process of publishing your music. The most obvious way this is carried out is the actual production of the digital and less and less these days, physical production of your scores and parts. And number three, the issuance of the music itself. How is the music itself being disseminated? If we're just talking about sheet music, are these materials being emailed or physically mailed? How are prices being set? How are you handling the billing? And now if we consider that all three of these key steps are being done by the composer rather than some other separate entity, we get to the term that we're all familiar with, self-publishing. Even though it might sound like a lot to hear at first, there have been many examples of composers that have been able to do this. Jennifer Higdon, John Mackey, Jonathan Bailey Holland, Alex Shapiro, and the list goes on and on and on. Today in 2022, it's not uncommon to be a self-published composer anymore. This leads to the question, why should you self-publish? Now, unless you have an impending deal with Shot, Edition Peters, or Boozy and Hawks, chances are that self-publishing is your only option as a composer to make any money. Remember, publishing is a business, composing is not. It's important to separate these two. Now, if you self-publish your work, you keep 100% ownership of your scores. This entitles you to have 100% say of when and how your work is performed. It also allows you to retain 100% of any royalties that may result from the sales of any of your sheet music or performances of your work. Now, if you sign a deal with any of those traditional publishers I just mentioned, chances are they're gonna take 50% of any royalties you may receive, as well as 90% of any sale that you may make. To me, that doesn't sound like a fun deal. It is terrible! <laughs> terrible to run me this way! Though to be fair, if you're working with a traditional publisher that really advocates for your work, there is a good chance that they could potentially get more of a commission fee for you for any new work than you could have done on your own. Just be careful though, because most publishing houses are gonna want you to sign away all your work to them. So if there's a situation that happens in the future where you wanna get out of the deal, you're gonna to have to buy back all the copyrights to the works that you already composed. Now that sounds like any fun to me, so personally, I'm happy to self-publish my own music. So now this begs the question, how should you self-publish your music? Now there are a lot of steps to this process, but I'm gonna to try to be as succinct as I can without being too overbearing. This might be a good time to mention that if you're getting something out of this video, please be sure to like the video. You have 100% ownership of whether you do that or not, so there you go. Okay, so step one to publishing your music. Once your piece is done, make sure it's actually publisher ready. What does that mean exactly? Well, for starters, you need to make sure the score and parts themselves are engraved to a professional standard. If you need some help with that, there's a great book I've recommended before called Behind Bars, which you can pick up from any local library. Not to mention there are plenty of forums and YouTube videos that already discuss this topic. Once you do that, make sure to come up with a title page that fits your personal aesthetic. Here's one I like from Christopher Cerrone. Here's a really clean looking one from Jason Eckhart. And yet here's another one from Brian Neighbors. The final touch is to add a preface page. This would be the page that would go between the title page and the actual sheet music. This preface page would have things like instrumentation, whether the score is transposed or in C. It would have performance notes for the players. And finally, it would have a program note. Step two is to make sure you get someone or yourself to play and record said piece of music and then upload it to a place like YouTube or SoundCloud or any other platform that you enjoy using. This leads us to step number three, putting your score and recording up on your own personal website. Now, I'm not gonna go over how to build a website. There are plenty of videos on YouTube where you can learn how to do that. Rather, I'm going to show you how you should present 
each of your newly published works on your website. Now, what you're looking at is what I personally do with each of my pieces. You see at the top that I clearly list the four essential parts that anyone interested in programming this piece would need to know. The work's title, the data composition, its duration, and instrumentation. Right below that, I have two buttons. The first button links to a PDF of the entire score with a big watermark drawn across it. If folks want to buy the piece, they can head over to the second button, which links to an order form that shows exactly what to do step-by-step -step to actually purchase the score and parts. Right below those buttons, I have a recording of the piece that anyone could listen to. And below that, there is some additional information about the commissioner, premiere date, and the program notes. So that's an example of how I do it. It's wonderful. Now, we already said the first part of being your own publisher is the fact that this is a business. Just from the fact that you see that I'm selling my work shows what the page's purpose is. I've already composed the piece. I've already collaborated with the musicians to make it the best that it could be. So now it's time to sell it. Plain and simple. Besides selling the sheet music, the other way we can make money from this piece is to sign up with your local performing rights organization and then register this work with them. And then after the performance, send the brochure that shows the program of the piece to your local performing rights organization of choice. Here, I'll show you an example. This is a breakdown of my performance royalties for some of my top grossing pieces from 2016 to now. At the very top, we see a piece called Command Fantasy, which is a piece originally for violin and piano, which I also adapted for orchestra, and which also exists in other versions, by the way. This one has done the best for some reason in terms of performances and the actual dollar amount of the residual payout. Then we head over to the next one, which is Takt. This one is in two versions, one for Symphonetta and one for a full orchestra. The other three pieces also happen to be for the orchestra. From this little overview, you probably have already realized that the larger the ensemble, the larger the payout. Which leads me to remind you once again that what we're talking about in this video has nothing to do with the quality of your compositions. Just because you think one piece is better than any other in your catalog doesn't mean that that piece is gonna provide you with the most performances and hence the most royalty income. For example, there are works of mine that I think are way better in terms of quality than these top grossing ones. But like I said, this has nothing to do with how you are compensated for those pieces. Now, after you've done all of this, you might be wondering, is there anything else I need to do? Well, the short answer is yes, there is always something you can do as a composer that is self-published. It's just a matter of delegating how much time in the day you wanna spend doing those things. For example, today I just covered the basic nuts and bolts of what you have to do to present your music in a way that makes someone that doesn't know your music at all assess whether they wanna program your music or not. Now it would help me immensely if you wrote down in the comments below what you would like me to dive into more specifically besides what I've covered today. Maybe things like how to make an invoice or a packing slip for physical materials, or how to negotiate a rental agreement with orchestras. Maybe how to implement inbound and outbound marketing strategies, or even the different possibilities of promoting oneself on social media. Literally the possibilities are endless. My philosophy though is to choose what's important and doable for you. For me, I have identified three main things that are essential for my self-publishing business. Number one, making sure my website is completely and utterly up to date, not just with my catalog, but also with upcoming events and news articles. Number two, my monthly email newsletter, which by the way, you should subscribe to, link down in the description below. And number three, of course, is this YouTube channel, which I've had a lot of fun diving into these last couple of years. Now, if you got something out of this video, maybe you'll like one of these videos. This one is about how to join ASCAP. And this one right over here is about how to negotiate a commissioning contract. All right, go forth and thanks for watching.